All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be updating you guys on the Winter Thoughts series. We're just going to be going over all of the things we always go over except the updated information. Anyways, before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I would like to know, do you think this winter is going to be a front-end one where December's very cold and snowy, January's kind of cold and snowy, and then February is kind of the least cold and snowy, or do you think it's going to be more of a back-end winter where December's kind of warmer and not as snowy, and then it gets worse and worse as time goes on? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look here at our sea surface temperature anomalies as always. And things have changed pretty significantly. We have more of, of, of a La Nina in general here. Uh, also the PDO, which is up there north of that La Nina. The La Nina there is in the middle of the Pacific where you see a lot of that cold kind of stretching across horizontally. That is our La Nina. Colder sea surface temperatures there indicating that La Nina is actually developing. Uh, the PDO is north of there, and what we look for generally is colder waters south of Alaska and offshore of Canada in the Pacific, and we see that, and then also a little area there offshore of California that extends all the way to Hawaii, and you can see it kind of horseshoes around the warmer sea surface temperatures. That's a classic negative PDO, and what this is going to allow for is colder air to make its way right on shore to the western regions, uh, and eventually, if the, if the pattern allows for it, into the eastern regions of North America. Now, when you see a positive PDO, that can cause torches in the winter, which basically would mean if the, if the wind is moving really quickly from west to east, it could carry those warm temperatures all the way across the United States, which is kind of what we've seen in years past before. So it's good to know that that kind of a pattern isn't really in the picture at this point. Another Atlantic, as we zoom in here, or actually we have to take a look at the seven-day change first, and as you can see, uh, things have cooled a lot in the La Nina region, but also we've seen some warming in some regions too, so it is kind of a confused pattern. We see a lot of cooling north of there in that PDO region though, uh, and that has really developed into a pretty strongly negative PDO. Now for the North Atlantic, we have warmer water still for a majority here of the North Atlantic. Uh, and the one good thing about this for the wintertime is that this could cause a negative NAO pattern to be pretty common. Uh, that's specifically those warmer waters near... Uh, eastern Canada and also south of Greenland. So those areas are going to really help to create some blocking this upcoming winter uh, for those colder patterns in the east. Now our seven day change here though, we see that there's been a lot of cooling throughout the Caribbean and then also uh, well offshore of the east coast, kind of in the middle of the Atlantic, but kind of closer to the east coast rather than Africa and Europe. Uh, but we've also seen some warming very close to the coast. So it's been kind of all over the place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our Nino 3.4 index which shows us on a chart kind of where we're at with the La Nina. And then we're going to take a look at the North Atlantic sea surface temperature anomalies again on a chart overall. And then we're going to start talking about the modeled ENSO forecast and then also some surface forecasts from the models like temperature forecast, precipitation forecast, and so on. And then we're going to close out the video. All right, now here we are taking a look at that Nino 3.4 index, and this is really important. This is even more important than taking a look at sea surface temperatures uh, because this just gives us a very, very specific view at where we're at. And as you can see, things have, be have basically just been decreasing uh, since, we, since the beginning of this frame. From left to right, it is descending clearly here overall. Uh, and the beginning of that is kind of July 15th time frame. Uh, and obviously the end is today, October 9th. So we've decreased a lot. We were even in the positive range in July. And then we kind of moved more toward neutral for quite a while, all the way through mid-September. And then now we finally crossed down into that kind of very weak La Nina status. And the interesting thing about this is that you usually give it about a month of lag, which would put us kind of around mid-November, just before the winter starts, for finally feeling those La Nina conditions. So it's going to be just in time to hit before winter. So we could see a full winter of La Nina conditions from December all the way through February. Now here's the North Atlantic chart. And as you can see, things have generally warmed. We were warmer kind of around mid-September. And then we saw some really, some tapering off of that. And now we've remained 
kind of where we were before that point. So since August, well, even towards <laughs> kind of later July, uh, we've been kind of around that 0.5 line. Uh, we did, like I said, around mid-September kind of try to cross higher than that, but it's come back down as well. So we've been hovering right around that line for quite a while now, and it doesn't look to end anytime soon unless something unforeseen happens. Here is our model predictions of the ENSO from September 2021. We do not have an October version of this yet, so this is our September version. And as you can see, they generally expect us to kind of hover around where we're at uh, all the way through the winter. And then we start to ascend after we reach about the springtime. Uh, at the bottom, you see things like DJF, that stands for December, January, February. The next one would be JFM, which is January, February, March and so on and so forth. Uh, so as you can see, uh, March, April, May, which is our spring season, we're already kind of back at a neutral ENSO uh, by then. Now, this is kind of a different chart. It's the same idea, but just a different process. So it's still the ENSO forecast, but just a different version of it. So basically, this is a probability chart. Uh, and those bars here, uh, as you can see, that indicates either a La Nina, a neutral ENSO, or an El Nino. And as you can see, for our DJF, we do have a kind of 35% chance of having a neutral ENSO, uh, but we have about a 60% chance of having a La Nina and then probably like a 2% chance of having an El Nino. It's not going to happen, but uh, so as you can see, we have a, a majority here uh, chance of seeing a La Nina rather than a neutral ENSO. So unless there's some unforeseen war warming um, in the meantime, we're really looking at a very weak La Nina winner is kind of what appears to be most likely. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at our CFS monthly model to take a look at what it's calling for for December, January, uh, and then we're going to take a look at the precipitation forecast as well. Now, I talked about this in our last version of our uh, winter thoughts video, but on tropical tidbits, the CFS model looks like this for a majority of the winter, or actually all of the winter, matter of fact very torch-like, and, and the weird thing about this is usually if you see that warmer air over the Arctic Circle, and you can see it's definitely there, that indicates a negative AO, um, and that would indicate that somewhere in the United States is going to have a big trough, whether it's the west or the east, somebody is getting cold, and this model is not putting that out, so this is a confused version of the model, and I indicated this to you guys last time, but this is 12 runs um, kind of combined here of this model. So when you get that averaged out on a model like this, it just kind of starts to look weird and not how things are going to look. Um, and once we take a look at Weather Bell, which does not uh, take 12 runs and combine them, it's just a single run, you can see here that we have colder temperatures for the eastern United States here on their December forecast here on Weather Bell. So it's a big, big difference. Uh, this would kind of be a positive PNA pattern and then a negative uh, AO pattern as well, possibly negative NAO. Uh, but the interesting thing is just like my winter forecast, if you look very, very closely at Oregon and Washington there, they do have colder temperatures like I've indicated in those forecasts as well. So this looks a lot like my winter forecast actually. January things warm up a bit. Um, we do see some colder air make its way out west and then the Rockies, but we can't see February. So it remains to be seen if that will be another cold month in the east or if it'll be kind of like that January look. Uh, but regardless, there will be cold times for the west and for the east during the winter. And also, here's the precipitation real quickly. And December looks a little dry in the east, very, very wet in the west. But as we progress towards January here, you can see things get very wet in the east. And they remain wet in the northwest and the Rockies. This is, again, a lot like my winter forecast. But it gets dry for California, dry for the south central and for the southeast. Again, literally right on par with my winter forecast. And then February is more of like a Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, Deep South, uh, very, very stormy in those regions and also the Northwest still, uh, but kind of dry along the Eastern Seaboard and also the Southwest there as well. Uh, so anyway, that's it for this Winter Thoughts video. Obviously, we've just been updating you guys on a multitude of things. Uh, and I just wanted to give you guys an update because it's been about two weeks since we made one of those. And I know a lot of you uh, are curious about what the, you know, what the outlook looks like as of right now. So I wanted to update you guys on that. And take a break from talking about that storm that's going to happen for the Rockies. Obviously, we're going to go back to talking about that at some point. But I wanted to give you guys some relief for those of you that don't really care about that storm. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, 
I asked you guys, do you think this upcoming severe weather threat will be our last one? And James Moore said, yes, I believe this will be our last big severe weather event for quite some time. And I think that's a safe bet, honestly. Usually, uh, once you reach October, we can see multiple severe weather threats. But November, December, uh, it's pretty sparse. So it is possible, but it, is, it isn't like super, super common. Usually, some years we'll see like one big or maybe two big severe weather days in the winter. Um, you know, I, I can remember a couple of years ago, we had a moderate risk for the, uh, I want to say for the Dixie Alley, we had um, a moderate risk, one of those winners, I don't know. But it happens, and that's the point. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Mandy Birchfield, and Patrick Strickland as well. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Horley, Michael Kudalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Alan Goodmaben, Bill Dallas, Garys, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, Stephen Kernethal, and Thomas D. Barr as well. If you'd like to join this uh, patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also have to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.